Uh, big win. Excited for our guys. Excited for our team. Excited for uh, K-State Nation out there. Excited for all the former players. Um, uh, because this one means an awful lot to those guys. It means an awful lot to the state. It means a ton to the almost 60 kids we have on our team from the state of Kansas. And um, I just couldn't have been more happy with the way the guys started in the first half, started in the second half. And obviously it wasn't perfect. We, we've got to clean some things up. But in the same respect, you play a rivalry game and have won it as many times in a row as K-State has. There's some anxiety to that. And uh, I thought the guys had great focus uh, throughout the week. I thought our preparation was really good. And I thought we could do some things offensively uh, through the air with Skyler. And uh, I think that kid's a great football player. I've told you guys that a bunch. And we have a pretty special tailback. And uh, he made some big time plays. And then uh, although we had some laps in defense, um, we got the stops when we needed to, and uh, so excited for the guys. You know, we're we're six and three. We're bowl eligible. We uh, um, have won three games in a row. It tells you an awful lot about the character and the resolve of our guys uh, when we started off the way we started off in conference. And um, there was there was always continued belief in that locker room, continued belief with those leaders that uh, we had a good football team, and uh, we just needed to turn it around. And I can't I just can't say enough about our leaders. Talk about Echo Boy Doves game in his uh, hometown. Yeah, he got one of our players of the game uh, hammers in, in the locker room. I, I think he's playing really well. He's tackling well. He's covering well. He's extremely fast. I mean, he can flat fly. He's getting better at flipping his his eyes around and making plays and knocking balls away. Um, you know, I'm sure he'd like to think he could get a pick or two on those, but uh, uh, I, he's a shutdown corner, and I'm excited for how he's playing because it's given him a ton of confidence. How big was to get Malik Knowles on track to the big play game? Yeah, it was big. He, you know, Malik left the game last week with an injury and uh, missed a little bit of time this week and then felt great late in the week. And uh, give our old line credit, great protection. And uh, uh, we ran kind of a double post concept. And, and Malik gets a step on people. Not very many people are going to catch him. And, Skyler put around the money, and that was a huge play at the time. Uh, after it was seven to three to get a 68 yard pass uh, in, in a two play series. It seems like he's walked away fine from both, so that's a good thing. But how frustrating has it been to see Skyler be on the receiving end of two like he is? Yeah, yeah, um, and you know, it's 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 unfortunate, it's frustrating. Um, and uh, I, Lance is a class act; he'll he'll address it. Um, but uh, you know, it, it, it happened. And, Shoot, we hit their quarterback late and got a couple penalties. I mean, it's some of it is bang bang stuff, and, and uh, uh, but no, he he's fine, he's healthy, he's ready to go, go back and get it again next week. Coach, it's been interesting. This season's kind of broken off in quarters here, with the entering the final three games of the season. Pretty comparable teams with everyone. What, what's your message to your team? Just got to keep getting better. Uh, we're doing some things really well, and you can tell we're playing with confidence. Playing with a little bit of an edge and a little bit of swagger. We're playing faster overall. I think the guys' bodies are pretty fresh, which is something we've focused on because this is the, you know, last year was so odd. This is a new year. You're retraining guys to play a 12 game season. And uh, I think we're fast, we're fresh. Um, we've got a, a really tough opponent coming into our place, but uh, I think our guys are playing with some confidence. Cool. What, what, what are you happiest about from this? Um, that these Kansas kids were able to get another win over, over Kansas. You know, um, to be a K-Stater, uh, this game means everything. And um, for those kids in that locker room, so many of them took the chance to come to K-State, um, bought into some of our beliefs as coaches, because there's a lot of upperclassmen there. I, I love it. They're celebrating with the Governor's Cup out there. Uh, and uh, that's what I'm excited about for those Kansas kids. You guys ran out of the I formation a few times today. What was it about that formation? Probably an attitude, just trying to say, hey, you know what, we're going to come downhill um, and let our guys up front do a great job of, of blocking the point of attack. We kind of put a new play in, kind of a toss play, uh, and gave us some good yards and it kind of set the tone to be able to get into some second and ones. And um, But, you know, I think we've got to be able to line up and knock, knock people off the ball as well as get into our gun read zone stuff and jet sweeps. Deuce had a career high in rushing. What impressed you most? Uh, you know what? Keep talking about the kid. He just is so special. You know, uh, making plays and 
you know, he made a couple of really good plays on third down in the past game where we were trying to get him the football. And uh, he did it and made a couple guys miss. And uh, the, the long run to start the second half uh, was huge because I knew that we were going to answer questions if we didn't score on the first drive. And uh, of course, we started with a false start. And, and mess is going, oh my God, I just can't wait. I said, well, we go to the next play. And he got around the corner. And, and uh, I was like, well, that was a pretty good start to the second half. Coach, you mentioned confidence. With this team, especially with this runner on, where do you think that confidence is, and where do you think it can push your team going forward? Well, it, it's stay humble and stay hungry too. It's confident that we're playing better, but be humble because we need to continue to improve and get better. And I think our guys can do that. There's some things that we're still making some errors on that we have to correct, uh, and they're correctable errors. Um, whether it's you know a, a broken coverage to a missed assignment on a pass route, whatever it may be, and so uh, I think our guys know that when we play well and with confidence, we can play with anybody. And if we don't, you know, if we don't play with really good confidence, we, we make critical errors, uh, we can get beat by anybody. How do you think the offensive line played? Well, we rushed for what, 242 yards, um, 30 attempts, which is not very many. So I think we played pretty doggone well up front. Bunch of Kansas kids again. Um, excited for those guys from, from from the state because we've got a bunch of guys from, from the state of Kansas led by our captain Noah Johnson. That this game meant a lot to us. How important was it to try and get some of the reserves in at the end of the game there? Yeah, it, it was it was good. I was excited to be able to get Will Howard uh, in the game, and I thought Will made some good plays. We got everything called back, but he made some really good plays and threw the ball well and ran the ball well. I mean, I, Will's a good football player. I think it was good to get some of the extra um, defense offensive linemen in. You know, it kind of goes without saying. I, I know everybody noticed, but Cody Fletcher didn't start because he, he was nicked up from the week before. We thought he could play a handful of snaps, and he did. But Austin Moore stepped up and uh, played really well and played with confidence. And so I'm excited about young players like that that are um, new to the, young to the program and continue to get better. Coach, when you talk about KU, you spoke that on tape, and now you see him in person. What do you think about over there? Well, um, I, I know the man that's leading him. Lance Leipold. I don't know their locker room. I don't know their talent level. I know they've got the right guy leading them because Lance Leipold's a class act. And, uh, um, uh, you know, he's very similar to me. We, we weren't brought up in the FBS, the Power Five. We've worked our way to, to get to this level, and, and Lance is the right guy for the job. So, could you be a right guard? What precipitated that? Getting KT in the game a little bit more. And so, um, you know, we've been moving KT around, and KT. Uh, I think uh, there's a comfort level on the left side, and we didn't want to take Rebus out. And so we put KT at left tackle and moved uh, Cooper over to, to right guard, just continuing uh, to mix and match, match some guys um, so we can maximize our ability. Do you want to address your, your coverage capabilities and how much that's progressed in the last few weeks? Um, we're doing some good things in, in coverage. We're playing some better man coverage. We're pressuring the quarterback better. Um, you know, we, we dropped some things in zone. Uh, we had a mishap on their long play that led them to a field goal um, with the communication. And um, so it's, it's always a work in progress. But, um, you know, with us getting pressure on the quarterback, if we can play good solid zone defense we, and break on the ball, we should be continuing to improve that. Because of in-game injuries, KU ended up having three different quarterbacks in there. Did you guys change much of the initial game plan, or did you just stick with what you guys wanted to no, I thought all three guys were very similar. Maybe they had a little bit different skill sets, but in reality, uh, they all can run their offense. They're all really a athletic and can get out on the edge. And that's the biggest thing that concerned us coming into the game was not letting the quarterbacks beat us with their feet, make them beat us with their arm. And uh, so I, it was unfortunate. I know they had a couple of guys get nicked up, but uh, um, didn't change the plan. Well, different receivers in the game, I think. Well, it's really important, and we were banged up at, at wide receiver, so we didn't have uh, our full, full complement throughout the week. So we gave a lot of young kids an opportunity, and uh, you know, a young guy like Keenan Garber is going to be a really good. He's still young. I, I know he's been here a couple of years, but he's a young guy sitting behind Malik and Philip and Landry. Keenan's a really good player. He's just um, right now not as good as those three in the offensive coach's minds, but he has the ability, and he's going to be a difference maker, Keenan Garber is for us. I'm so excited about him because he gains more and more confidence with, with every practice, with every game he has. He made a critical block on a third down play to spring deuce, and so uh, I'm excited. Keenan's an exceptional player. You mentioned 
for him at right guard. He's another Kansas kid. How would you address his growth and versatility? Yeah, he's a guy that can play anywhere and a really smart uh, offensive lineman that Coach Riley uh, challenges those guys to learn multiple spots so that when you get into a situation, especially when you come on the road, you can't travel everybody. Um, we only can travel 70. And so uh, the guys have to be able to play multiple spots. He doesn't know. No. Seems like Cade Warren is becoming a security blanket for Skyler on third downs. Yeah, he was another guy that received one of our hammers. Uh, that was a critical play on third down. He caught it and, and uh, wasn't able to get the first down and kept fighting and kept fighting. I, I love that kid. He's a, he's a tough competitor, helps the young guys. He's a team first guy, um, excited for, for what Cade brings to our program. Yeah, he, he doesn't get the headlines as much maybe as Skyler or, or Deuce, but how thrilled were you when, when Ben scored that touchdown? Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, um, Ben's a, a really good football player, a young kid from Coach Messes in my hometown. Um, went to the same high school as I did, uh, friends with his father, and excited for the kid. Yeah, you know, get, get his first college touchdown and uh, a freshman that's going to be a really good player. I mean, we're still, we've got a lot of older kids that are making big time plays. And uh, we've got some younger kids that are continuing to grow and get better. How much does that add to your satisfaction? Like, the, given the connection of your hometown, that being your high school out there? You know, it's pretty, it, it's satisfying, yeah. obviously. Co Coach Mess and I will joke about it. That, you know, a kid from my high school is one that did it, not from his. But yeah, it's, <laughs> it is what it is. So, but he gave him the football. He called the play. So yeah. happy for happy for Ben and happy for Mess. Time for one more. Was it a hard choice to choose to punt on that fourth and short in the first half? When we uh, missed the field goal, is that what you're talking about or which one I'm trying to think? Well, uh, we had a couple that we were talking about and Mess, Mess goes, hey, this is either going to be, we're going to get it or we're not. I think it was a fourth and four or something. I'm not sure. And we ended up punting it and we didn't have a very good punt. But um, had we gained anything on it, we were going to go for it. And we didn't. And so we ended up punting the football. And in a game like this where I thought points were going to be a premium for them, I wasn't going to give them a short field, and so I was going to try to make them drive the length of the field, hoping that you know we were going to probably be able to score. Anything else? All right, thanks. I appreciate it, everybody.